Hello and welcome Crypt Dwellers to the Retro Media Crypt. Coming up on today's episode, we take a look at the 1990s body horror slime fest, The Alien Factor. Freaking thing's pissing on me. We remember our top five stop motion movie monsters. <laughs> and we delve into some stop motion animation techniques used in video games. A close encounter of the practical kind on this week's Retro Media Crypt. With its combination of outlandish practical effects and dazzling stop motion animation, it's fair to say that Metamorphosis, the alien factor, was inspired by body horror classics such as John Carpenter's The Thing and Cronenberg's The Fly. But to fully understand this straight-to-video release from 1990, we need to go back to 1983. With the VHS boom in full swing and the video recordings act just around the corner, a video distributor named Vipco, who had previously released controversial classics Zombie Flesh Eaters, Fully Uncut, in 1981, and Abel Ferrara's notorious The Driller Killer, in 1982, released the Alien Invasion Splatterthon, The Deadly Spawn, in May of 1983. Upon its release, The Deadly Spawn would attain somewhat of a cult following, and it's quite easy to understand why. This minuscule budget blood spiller punches well above its weight. Okay, the acting isn't great, but who expects Oscar-worthy performances from a film about an alien crashing to Earth and shooting flesh-eating parasitic spores at people? It's the excellent soundtrack and the practical effects that make this a strange concoction of atmosphere and laugh out loud goofiness. Production on a sequel, Deadly Spawn 2 Metamorphosis, began in 1987, but after some legal issues and delays in production, the film would later be released and renamed Metamorphosis The Alien Factor. <laughs> You sure you got him? The film was shot in an abandoned warehouse with an estimated £2 million budget and directed by Glenn Takakjian, with this being his only credit as a feature film director. The film follows the evil Talos Corporation, who have a secret research lab that is experimenting on alien life forms. A research doctor is bitten by one of the test subjects and proceeds to transform into an alien being. Whilst this metamorphosis of the Doctor is great to watch, the first half of the film is fairly clunky with its flashback style narrative, but once the alien Doctor is fully unleashed, the film escalates nicely. It's the special effects that keep the film going when moments are dull. The Doctor's change from human to monster is impressively graphic and slimy, and represented in pure practical marvel by the FX crew. We've got latex puppets, animatronics, and slimy latex skins. The level of effects are light years ahead of the Deadly Spawn, which is no surprise considering the estimated budget. Gone are the dark cellar shots of Deadly Spawn. Here the alien is shown in well-lit corridors and secret labs, where you get to see every shred of eviscerated flesh and every drop of slime. The Alien Factor even features some old-school style stop-motion animation that is actually very effective, offering up a nice sense of scale in the creatures. Creature design in Alien Factor is good, and there's a very genetic mutation feel to it, which I think suits the science fiction plot well. But I can't help but prefer the old school charm of the Deadly Spawn's creature design, which has a more straight up horror feel than science fiction. Overall, Metamorphosis the Alien Factor is a worthy spiritual successor to the Deadly Spawn and it's worth watching just for the special effects alone. What the and the cheesy acting. What about Elliot? What about John Griffin? What are you gonna do about them? An awkward narrative in the first half never really bogged down the film, and it remains an entertaining watch for any science fiction or horror fan. Jesus Christ! Freaking thing's pissing on me. 
If you enjoy films like Deep Space, The Terror Within and Regenerator, then I'd say definitely check this one out and The Deadly Spawn. In honour of Metamorphosis, the Alien Factor's use of the stop-motion animation technique, we take a look at our top five stop-motion creations from some of our favourite films. <laughs> Pint-sized terror is brought to life in Stuart Gordon's Dolls from 1987. This killer toys chiller has some great stop-motion effects from David Allen. <laughs> James Cameron's cyborg killer, the T-800, comes in at number four, with the final scene in 1984's Terminator showcasing an epic battle between Kyle Reese and the stop-motion endoskeleton. <laughs> Gore master Sam Raimi's cult classic Evil Dead is at number three, featuring an excellent decomposing corpse, all in glorious stop motion. <laughs> Robocop's law-enforcing competitor is at number two. Ed 209 is a hulking beast of metal that dazzles in Paul Verhoeven's Robocop from 1987. <laughs> <laughs> from effects wizard Ray Harryhausen comes the Skeleton Men from 1963's Jason and the Argonauts. Excellent design and buttery smooth animation make this our top pick. It isn't just the motion picture industry that used the stop motion animation techniques. A few video games utilise this function as well. We take a look at Primal Rage, a 2D fighter from 1994 released to arcades by Atari Games. It features fully animated stop motion dinosaurs tearing seven shreds of flesh from each other. Stop motion is the process of filming an object frame by frame, each time with slight variations in movement. When these images are sequenced together, they create a fluid animation. In Primal Rage, artists created detailed clay sculptures of each character. These were then used to create a negative mould. A fully poseable support skeleton is then fitted into the mould, and latex liquid is then added. Once dried in an oven and painted, you have a fully poseable dinosaur. Each frame of every move was then captured by a special machine designed in Silicon Valley. No traditional film was used. The captured footage will then be fine-tuned and turned into sprites for the game by the artists and programmers. Personally, I think the technique created a highly stylistic and interesting game, and when I saw it in arcades for the first time, I was just as amazed as when I'd first played Mortal Kombat 2 or Samurai Showdown. Gameplay-wise, those two games are better, but Primal Rage often gets some unwarranted flack. Rage. The animation was great. It had interesting characters. Good and sometimes hilarious moves. And fatalities. And you could eat people. But it has attained a small cult following these days, and even the unreleased and once thought unplayable sequel, Primal Rage 2, has even become available to any that should seek it out. Primal Rage was a nice alternative to the Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat clones of the time, and whilst not regarded as a classic, I'm sure most people will agree it's better than Clay Fighter. Quicken, 
And that brings us to the end of the episode. Will dinosaurs rule the new earth? Tune in next time on the Retro Media Crypt. Till next time, crypt dwellers. <laughs>